All right, friends, I want to be mindful of everyone's time. I know that uh, we've got some people still coming in through the waiting room, but I wanted us to get started. Uh, what an amazing documentary. I hope you've all had a chance to uh, enjoy it with me uh, for love of neighbor politics for the common good. Uh, I am Pete Peterson, the Dean of Pepperdine's Graduate School of Public Policy. And um, it, it's uh, great to welcome you here to the post-screening conversation uh, with two SPP alums who have run for office, one currently in office, uh, Christian Daly and Hans Zeiger. We certainly do welcome your questions here. We're gonna just be about a half hour, 45 minutes, um, but I wanted to get this underway following, I think, uh, what I hope you agree was a really great conversation about the intersection of faith and politics. To introduce uh, some of you to Christian, Christian is uh, again an SPP alum, MPP uh, 2016, uh, was a candidate this year for the US Congress out of the 27th district. Uh, he's a California native, born and raised in the San Gabriel Valley, uh, received uh, an associate's degree at Pasadena City College and then went on to get his Bachelor of Arts at USC. Uh, he got his master's again here at Pepperdine and served uh, in uh, political office, at least in public service, as a district representative for the 62nd uh, California State Assembly District. Uh, after graduating from SPP with honors, uh, he went to work for the County of Los Angeles and spent most recent years as deputy supervisor for the fifth supervisorial district here in LA County. He represented the county and advocated for residents in nine communities in the San Gabriel Valley. And again, earlier this year, Daly ran for Congress out of the 27th Congressional District. I look forward to speaking with him about that. Hans Zeiger uh, graduated in 2009 and is currently a state senator for Washington State in the 25th Legislative District. Um, he began his life in public service uh, representing Pierce County residents in 2011, where he served three terms in the State House of Representatives uh, before being elected into his current position. Uh, Hans serves as a ranking member on the Housing Stability and Affordability Committee and State Government, Tribal Relations and Elections Committee, and he is also a member of the Transportation Committee and Human Services, Reentry and Rehabilitation Committees. Uh, outside of the legislature, Hans leads the Chapman Center for Citizen Leadership at the Seattle-based Discovery Institute and as an officer in the Washington Air National Guard. Hans got his bachelor's in Hillsdale and again got his master's here at Pepperdine. And so with that, I will stop my screen share and welcome you here uh, into the Dean's Conference Room here at Pepperdine in the Graduate School of Public Policy. Thanks so much for joining us. I want to get the conversation started just first with some reflections. Again, my I don't really have much of an outline here, but I'm going to be spending uh, probably the next 40 minutes or so in conversation. I welcome any questions that you might have through the chat feature, or I think we're a small enough group that once we get to Q&A, I certainly welcome your raising your hand and just uh, holding forth. And so with that, uh, Christian, why don't we begin with you, your thoughts or reflections on the, on the screening of For Love of Neighbor? What, what struck you? Right. Um, I think it was amazing. Let me just stop and say thank you for having me here. It's good to be back on uh, Pepperdine's campus, even though it's virtually. Um, and again, good evening to everyone. Um, I think what struck me was just that, um, that unwavering will um, that we have in our hearts to serve uh, and to help. And I mean, when it really breaks down, I mean, uh, this screening was focused on one particular area. Um, but in all areas, you know, no matter where you're coming from professionally or just in life period, there's just innate, this innate will to serve. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that, you know, focusing on that and kind of like pushing that forward and kind of opening up people's eyes uh, to say not only to serve, but also to have this mindset to have your faith involved with that uh, really struck me. Hans, your thoughts 
on uh, what what you took away, what struck you about this uh, short film? Well, it, it really resonated with me, and thanks for the privilege of being part of this discussion. You know, one of the advantages of uh, running for the legislature, as I did in my early 20s, um, uh, actually sh very shortly after I finished um, my MPP at Pepperdine, uh, one of the advantages is that I got a lot of good advice and wisdom from people. Uh, and I remember in 2009, uh, as I was getting my campaign going, um, in advance of the 2010 election, I was getting some advice about public life from a, a state legislator who was advising me. And he said, before you go into a meeting, always say a prayer. I, uh, you know, that stood out to me. It was good advice. Uh, I've, I've found that to be, um, you know, uh, very true, very, um, you know, uh, something that I've found to be a, a good principle to put into practice. Mm. But then when I was talking uh, to people about that first campaign, I remember calling two former legislators. And when I said I was thinking of running, they both asked the exact same thing. They said, have you prayed about it? Mm. And I think that's a really important question because the vocation of public service really is a vocation. It's a calling. And I have personally felt that in my walk as a Christian believer um, who is serving in a public office. Mm. I think that this film is right on to acknowledge that dimension of public service, which I, I think very often when we talk about a politics, I think uh, when we talk about faith and politics, I think mm -hmm. there's some real pitfalls. Um, there's a quote that I noted that I, um, uh, th that I reread as I was getting ready for this conversation today. And it's a quote from uh, the former mayor of Missoula, Montana, Daniel Chemis, who was oh, yeah. the, uh, yeah. the speaker of the Montana House of Representatives. And he's a very yeah. insightful writer about democracy, but he summarizes the pitfalls of faith and politics in a book he wrote called The Good City and the Good Life. If I can just read a quick paragraph here. He says, um, we have a deep longing for a spiritual dimension in public life. In our prevailing political culture, this produces one of two results. The first is alienation from public life because it does not fulfill this spiritual need. People do not like politics or public life in general because it does not engage their highest and deepest instincts. So they either abandon citizenship altogether or they import into politics a narrow, essentially mean-spirited religiosity that only worsens the prevailing gracelessness of public life, thus mm -hmm. driving new multitudes into alienation. This has been all too much the legacy of the new right, just as alienation from an inhumanly secularized public life has been the legacy of liberalism. And I, I think that's right on. I think we yeah. have these, these pitfalls. Yeah, it was touched on. Yeah. Um, and, and we don't often approach the vocation of politics like this film does. So I'm really looking forward to digging into this further in this conversation. Christian, I think um, I, I'd love to hear, I think one of the interesting things you said in that of many uh, in that first uh, introduction uh, that you gave is that there are many different ways to serve. Uh, you've served in a lot of different ways, um, both in uh, running for office, but also working at the legislative level and at the county level. Um, but I'm super interested in why you decided to run for office. And I was wondering if you could take us through your decision-making process to do it. You ran really as an outsider. Um, you obviously ran as a no party preference candidate. So you actually ran outside of kind of the, the formal process itself. And so tell us a little bit about your decision-making process to to run for uh, a U.S. congressional seat this year. Right on. Um, so pretty much what Hans had shared earlier about praying. And I think that's really where it came down to. Um, mm -hmm. Personally, and opened up and being transparent. It, you know, I was working for the county at the time. And it was after a particular event that I went uh, to represent the Board of Supervisors at. And something just hit me in the heart. And mm. I couldn't shake it um, just from that Friday, that Saturday into that Sunday. And I finally just had to, you know, sit down, pray about it and say, okay, well, what's going on here? And it was this call outside of my own comfort zone to be of greater service. And, you know, a lot of times you can, we can be comfortable where we are and, mm. you know, we're, we're checking the boxes and we're saying, you know, well, um, I, you know, I went to school, 
you know, study public policy. I am working in that field. I'm working in my community. I'm yeah. pouring everything, you know, in my particular means. Um, but sometimes God kind of moves the marker from where you moved it. And he says, I need you to do something else. I need you to do mm. something more. Um, and so coming outside of that, coming outside of that comfort zone, you know, that's what it was me seeing that gap where I was and what I was able to do and then seeing what needed to be done um, was also an impetus in there that, that really kind of got the wheels turning. Mm. And um, in all, as far as like looking at it, because as a no party preference candidate, it was it was me stepping up against two the you know the two party system, mm -hmm. um, and for one I was always registered as an independent. I always thought that way. Always thought in the sense of it's about us working together and not kind of pigeon pigeon toeing myself into one particular um, area, but being able to kind of move around and to and to reach people. Uh, so as everything was kind of moving and progressing. Uh, and as you know, the deadlines were looming and it was me kind of every day, pretty much for months just saying, okay, am I going to do this? Mm. And finally taking that jump. And, you know, some of the people that was close, closest to me in that, in that political realm had asked, are you, which way are you going to go? And I said, you know what, I'm going to march forward. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to, here's, here's what we, what we stand for. Here's what I stand for. And this is what I'm going to, to represent, to really get down in the community and to listen to them i think one thing that kind of removed it um i mean all this have experienced it one way or the other we get a knock on the door from a particular religious group and we immediately just shut down and we're just like okay well that's not me that's not my community so running like that it was able to give me an opportunity to reach out to, into both communities mm. and really to have that conversation i remember one time um one of our campaign events was to gather people together. And I, I asked them to stop kind of halfway through and I said, look around. It was um, ethnically diverse, economically diverse, regionally diverse. And I said, this is, we're talking about our community and we're taking ownership of it. And that was amazing. And so coming from that point of view, um, from that outsider to kind of let people know that we are all neighbors. Yeah. And having people to kind of see that, whether you're red, blue, we're all neighbors. Well, that definitely came through in the documentary that even those serving in the Senate, um, I think particularly of the Tim Scott story, he definitely broke it down into very kind of um, neighborhood by neighborhood types of, of connections. And Hans, for you, obviously you've You've served at a couple different levels, first at um, in the assembly or legislature, now in the Senate, and now you're running for uh, a county seat. Um, tell us a little bit about your, your path and how you made the decision first to uh, run in the uh, assembly uh, district or legislative district, then for Senate, and now uh, this year making the decision to run at the county level. Yeah, so, you know, I remember coming out of actually the, you know, master's in public policy program at Pepperdine, and I was kind of on an academic trajectory at that point. I, I was uh, starting a PhD in political science at Claremont Graduate University. At the same time, I had this kind of itch to do something other than other than school, and um, and I'd been involved in community things in my hometown of Puyallup, Washington, and um, and, and it seemed like a good opportunity to challenge an incumbent. Uh, in 2010, you know, you go back 10 years, you think about what was going on at that time. The, you know, the Tea Party was, uh, what was, you know, a big deal at that time. So there was this kind of anti-incumbent mood in the country, and um, and I kind of I, I rode some of that wave. Ended up winning mm -hmm. my first election by 29 votes out of 52,000 cast. So every vote matters. Never let anybody tell you that it doesn't. Uh, you know that was after a whole lot of doorbelling and and uh, connection with voters. But um, you know, so I've been in the legislature for the last decade. It's been extremely rewarding. I've learned so much. I, I probably you know learned uh, as as much, if not more, than I would have if I'd stuck with that PhD program. Mm. But you know now, as I've as I've been in public service, 
uh, getting to know my community, getting to know how things work, how you get things done. I've come to admire more and more those who operate at the local level. I've operated at the state level. We've got over 7 million people in our state, in, in Washington state. And, um, and, and I've just realized that I'm, I'm deeply interested in the things that happen in local government. Uh, that, that wasn't always the case, but I really am right now. And, and I think that's the arena in which we are most likely to be able to bridge the political divides we face so deeply in our country right now. You know, I, when, when you can talk about our local streets and our neighborhoods and our public safety and our parks, and um, those are topics of conversation that are not partisan in the main. There yeah. may be some partisan uh, overlap and, at, on, on, you know, on the edges, but for the most part, we're talking about things where we can work together as Republicans, Democrats, independents, and, and get things done for the good of our community. I'm, I'm really attracted to that. And, uh, and, and I think we need to figure out ways to direct so much of our political conversation in that direction right now, because I think that really is the hope for getting over so many of these divisions that we have is to focus our attention more at the local level where we can get these things done and where relationships are possible. You know, the, the, the film, I think, uh, using that word neighbor so often is, is right on. Um, that's the level at which we can um, love one another to you know use um, use a biblical phrase mm -hmm. there I mean that there's uh, and so there's there's a calling there and uh, you know there's a calling to politics at any level whether it's national yeah. politics state politics um, or local politics but I in my particular case right now I feel particularly called to the local level Christian, I'm going to come back to you, and um, I think what's fascinating about your your resume, if you will, is that you have served as representatives of elected officials, and you've also run for office. Um, tell us first about what you learned about politics as uh, a staff person, first working in that uh, legislative office and then in uh, the supervisorial office. And how did that prepare you to think about running for office? I remember, I remember that one clip in the, um, in the film where uh, the woman, I, I believe her last name was Imboden, uh, was a reporter on local government issues. And at one point, she, the, the newspaper closes down, if you remember, and She's thinking about what's coming next. She realizes there's an open seat on the council. And she says to herself, well, I've been covering this council for a while. I know I could do that. And sure enough, she runs for office and wins. Was there something like that in the fact that you were serving and working closely with elected office holders that gave you a unique perspective? Um, you ran outside the system, but in many ways, you were very familiar with the politics and policy interests of uh, of the district from which you were running right um so it, it gave me this unique perspective to go from working for you know on the state level and then also on the county level but nevertheless mm. i mean wherever you have people you have politics <laughs> and funny enough when i was younger and you know kind of deciding on what career path to go into um, I said to myself, I want to avoid politics at all, all costs. <laughs> and I actually, you know, considered studying journalism to kind of, you know, get me uh, away from it. And and here I am today, which I laugh, right? You make your plans, but, you know, make sure you make those plans in pencil yeah. uh, because an eraser is coming pretty soon. <laughs> um, but, you know, on the politics side, um, what it what it allowed me to to do, and it was it was amazing because the the first elected that I worked for, um, I remember it was my interview with him, and my inter first I interviewed with the uh, district director, and and secondly it was with the elected member himself, right. and it was at a a, um, a campaign rally for another person that was running, and so I'm there, I go outside. This is my first for, foray into in the politics into that realm. And he points out to someone else and he says, you see that person over there, that's a politician. He said, I'm a public servant. And he explained to me the difference. Mm. And at that point, moving forward in my career, I decided to, to have that line to say, what is politics? What's a politician and what's public service? 
-hmm. are you a public servant? And I was fortunate for, for both one to work for a Democrat and the other to work for a Republican mm -hmm. later on with the county. Um, but to see that, to see that kind of come through in the midst of uh, politics, in the midst of, um, you know, the state undercurrent, the, the, you know, the county undercurrent, also the, you know, the federal kind of tidal wave at times. I yeah. just is kind of to see this, uh, this political nature in, in process, but then kind of going back down into the roots and saying, you know what, what about the service? Because that's what we're there in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so kind of like moving forward in that, and I have to be honest, you know, I mean, you know, hats off to, to Hans and, and to all those that are serving because also working for these individuals, I saw that this is a sacrifice, right? You're literally sacrificing what you want for the betterment of your community. And a lot of people don't understand that. And working for both, I thought to myself, many a days I say, you know what? I'm glad to be on this side of the, you know, <laughs> on, you know, on, on paper. And um, because of the nature of that, but, but moving forward and kind of getting to that point of transition of one, I remember in at, you know, SVP and people used to tease me and, you know, and say, well, so when are you running? And that kind of followed me from undergrad into, you know, mm. present day and just kind of like shying away from it and not really focusing on that, but kind of moving into this, this transition and realizing, you know what, I have a strong foundation, um, you know, in faith to kind of have that moral compass. This, you know, immaculate uh, training from, from SPP to kind of help me see things differently and kind of really get down to the root cause of a problem to actually be able to solve it. And I just talk about it, but that's really, I'll really get down to it. And then kind of working in that realm to say, you know, and a lot of people had said, I see you, you know, being my representative one day. Mm. And that, letting that sway me to say, you know what, I want to just, you know, jump on the bandwagon, what people are saying, but saying, how can I help? And kind of going from that, like I said, as far as that gap between, there's so much that I could do, you know, in my relative position. And so, you know, in order to kind of break those bonds and say, I see those problems, and I can only do so much, or I have to pass it off to my state counterpart or my federal counterpart. It was looking at saying, you know what, we can take that step, uh, you know, and and work to get solutions for those particular issues in our community. Mm. Um, and so that's what kind of like seeing that transition happen from going from saying I don't want to be anywhere near politics, <laughs> to kind of stepping into that arena and saying, you know what, all right. You, you guys can pick up the politics. I'm going to pick up the service, but let's get down to work. Hans, you, uh, that's actually a great segue into the next area I want to get into, which uh, Christian alluded to the, the sacrifices that are made by those in public office, a, a, a part of uh, political life that as we often ridicule so-called career politicians, uh, there are great sacrifices made um, by those who serve at all levels. Um, one of the, the areas I wanted to um, touch on is a, an area that you've been involved in, and it certainly is necessary, I believe, to, to discuss in, in light of current events, is, is civility. Uh, it's something I know that you've worked on. You've been a real leader in um, bridging the left-right divides. I know that you've you've been very involved in organizations that have done that. Um, how how do you view a where we're at in the condition of civil discourse, and b why do you approach it the way that you have? Well, the, the country is, um, you know, I think porn, when you look at it from just kind of a, a national perspective, or you get on Twitter and, and you, you judge civil or civic discourse um, on that basis. But I think when people have an opportunity to get to know one another, you see a different picture. And I've seen this time and again, whether it's with the relationships I have with constituents or whether it's the relationships I have with colleagues, you know, I've seen how things can get done when people just have the will to work together. Um, it's kind of interesting, you know, once in a while I'll get a nasty email from somebody uh, or a Facebook post or something like that who's worked up about an issue. 
And if they've left their phone number in an email, uh, I'll try to call them personally. And mm. very often it has been the case that, um, you know, when they've been rude in that initial approach, that initial email that they sent me, they start on the phone by being surprised that I called them. Uh, and, and then, you know, the, we usually have a very pleasant conversation. And at some point they'll apologize for the tone of their initial email and say they weren't really expecting anybody to, to actually pay attention. So I think this, this is a problem that we have in our politics where people kind of feel like it, it people feel that it's very distant. Yeah. And um, so people in public service have a real opportunity to bridge that sense of distance that people feel about their politics. And we have an opportunity to invite people to get involved in the political process, whether it's, uh, you know, inviting people to contact, uh, you know, um, a legislative office or whether it's the, you know, inviting somebody to run for an office, mm. uh, which I've had, which is one of the most rewarding things that I have found in my time in public service is finding ways to get people to uh, involved in running for office. But, you know, I think it, it's a sign of hope that the same person who can be uh, uncivil <laughs> in one communication can turn around and be civil in another communication. I mean, I think yes. we're, we're human beings and yep. we can, you know, I think people have some inner sense of decency and we can work with that. Uh, so there's not some permanent, you know, state of incivility that that's just, I, I think we can, we can get through this as a country and it's worth, uh, you know, not getting too down about that, but each of us can do our part. And that's, that's where we can find hope. Um, and, you know, I think there were some great quotes in, in the, the film, um, you know, the, the advisor to uh, George W. Bush, who, um, who talked about being careful about um, how we characterize the other side's motivations. Mm. Uh, it, it's very easy to, you know, demonize. Um, and very often it's just to score political points or to, you know, make our side look good and their side look bad and that kind of thing. But at the, at the end of the day, you know, we need each other in, mm. in our political order. We, mm. uh, we coexist as fellow citizens and we have to work through that. that. That's what politics is all about. When I first ran for office, a former legislator told me uh, relationships are more important than policies. And I found that to be true at every turn. But the thing I've learned since then is if you wanna make good policies, you gotta have good relationships. Yeah. So, um, so that's just fundamental. Christian, I wanna come back to you again. And just as a, a quick note to uh, those who are watching. Again, we welcome any questions that you might have. You can enter them in through the chat feature at the bottom um, or just simply uh, come off of uh, mute uh, and or raise your hand. Uh, either way, we're, we're, we're taking all means of communication here uh, on this group. Uh, Christian, I wanted to touch uh speak with you on this in on this subject of civility um because i thought one one of the things that's been remarkable about your congressional campaign is that you did run as a no party preference uh voter uh or as a no party preference candidate and in some ways you were making a remark about how politics has become so polarized in some ways the the medium was the message, you know, the, the campaign was the message. And I've heard you speak very eloquently about the importance of thinking more from a community-based standpoint versus a pure ideological lens. Tell us a little bit about how you, why you decided to run as a no party preference uh, candidate and also how um, how you see that intersecting, if it does, with this subject of, of civil discourse. Right. Um, funny enough, as far as um, between my work and, and Hans, I'm pretty sure uh, you've experienced those emails as far as the people are upset. Um, and I think as far as the piggyback on that, it, it gets down to the root cause of an issue, which is listening. And I think when people get to that point where they are upset, uh, when they're writing those some emails or making those kind of calls for, or they take a little little step further and, and you know and kind of march in a protest, is because they feel as though they have not been heard, or, mm. or quite frankly, they haven't been heard. And it's to address that, you know, to begin with. And I mean, 
one thing I, I think is a safe bet to say we have some students uh, uh, attending this event. And I'm going to bring us back to Shire's, Dr. Shire's class, Dr. Yeah. Corey. And, you know, when it, when it comes down to t- when it comes down to that great thing and it's when we get into the room and we focus on that great thing one of the the greatest things in that process is to be able to listen to one another and um hans i mentioned as far as that distance and as far as that's what i i felt in the community what i what i saw in the community what i what i saw in our nation and i said you know what let's let's take a step back to realize that it's about our community. It's about our neighbors. It's about the opportunities to listen to one another to actually understand where we're coming from, rather than kind of look at a caricature and and, and just think that we know everything about that person. Mm-hmm. But it's to actually sit down and that have that kind of conversation. And you know, and looking at that and, and, and saying, you know what, it's about like I, I've shared before about us working together. But most importantly, it's about me going to Washington, DC with my community in mind and vice versa and then knowing that you know what while i'm there they can reach out directly to me to my staff to whoever and say you know what because at the foundation and the core of everything i know that it's about them it's not about uh, an agenda it's not about an ideology it's about seeing a need that's in the community that may also be in other communities or rather in the state or in the nation and and saying to myself you know what Let's work together to make sure we solve these for our community, for other communities, and hopefully for our nation as well. And mm-hmm. really kind of getting down to that, that kind of mindset. And I think between um, what I think pop culture and, you know, pro- frankly, the news, whether it's, you know, cable broadcasting or, or local stations, we kind of see this and we feel this and people kind of pull away. And mm-hmm. for me, as far as, especially with the campaign, it's kind of say, no, 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 no. It's here's a table. Let's come to the table, whether we, whether you're a voter, whether, uh, you know, you're a potential colleague in, you know, in their respective office is saying, let's sit down at this table, realize who we have behind us, the people that we're working for, and let's get it done for them. Hans, I, I don't want to leave this subject of the sacrifices that are made by people holding elected office um, without just getting some of your insights on the sacrifices that you've had to make and family has to make. I I have seen this in the lives of people who I know who serve in elected office. Um, And I think, frankly, it's under it's underappreciated and it can happen at all levels. Right. I mean, I I know (laughs) I know city council members that get paid, you know, twelve thousand dollars a year and uh, and they're it's a second job. Um, you know, so tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the, the sacrifices that you and, and colleagues uh, have to make. Well, certainly, you know, being involved in public service at any level is time consuming. It, it, there's a lot of pressures. There's a lot of expectations. Um, you know, if you're going to be around uh, politics for any length of time, you have to figure out ways to deal with those things. And, um, you know, I, it, took me some time to learn some of those lessons um, and you know which is one of the reasons why I think that you want to have some level of experience in public office you want to have a mix of people who who have uh, who are new to political life as well as people who have some experience uh, in public office because there are uh, ways of dealing with public life that, that takes some time to, to figure out I uh, uh, you know, I can tell you there's just a, a lot of pressure that uh, elected officials put on themselves. I think that's uh, one of the reasons, uh, you know, going back to this discussion about faith in public life, why it's very important to be grounded in faith if you're going to be serving in public office. Um, you want to have some sense of perspective that faith can give you. Um, and by the way, one of the most um, significant things uh, in, in our legislature that I think is an opportunity to bridge the partisan divide is uh, a weekly fellowship group that gets together every Mm -hmm. Tuesday morning of Republicans and Democrats, House and Senate members. And um, it's it's a rich time of 
sharing testimonies, sharing some of the burdens that we face as elected officials, mm. prayer requests, time to, to pray for each other, uh, occasionally sing. Um, it, it always leads up to the governor's prayer breakfast each year. Um, but what a rewarding thing that that has been for so many legislators who have to deal with these pressures that they face being elected elected officials. And, and um, you know, in, in many cases, uh, being away from home for a period of time, if you're coming from the opposite side of the state, um, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to uh, live on the west side of the state, not too far from the state capital, but, um, uh, but it's a real burden for people who have to make that long commute. And so, Christian, the, as you think about the experience of running for office this year, um, what were, what was your, what was the toughest thing that you had to learn? Um, but what was your, your most pleasant surprise from entering into the arena? Um, I guess I'll start with the, the pleasantness of it. Um, it was truly kind of taking the lens off of what I thought about the community, how I saw the community to actually kind of remove myself from, um, I guess, from just a resident, you know, kind of my own four walls and saying, you know what, I'm, you know, this is me, this is who I am as a resident of this area, or even as someone that worked, you know, on the, the government side, you know, representing and helping those and, you know, calling them instead of my neighbors, my constituents, mm. um, and then kind of removing myself from them and saying, okay, now I want to be, you know, their servant. And I think that was one of the most, and it was that bridge that brought me to the engagement of the community, of those that haven't been heard, of those that, you know, voice their opinion quite regularly in their, you know, whether it be in emails, phone calls, or public meetings, but nevertheless reaching out to all and saying, you know, and, and just getting down to having that conversation, because I think a lot of times, if not all the time, a lot of our problems kind of come down to miscommunication and it just snowballs and it can snowball and you can apply that in every area. And, and quite frankly, in this, in the political realm, it's if we kind of, you know, kind of put a pause and allow us to kind of speak, listen to one another, digest, and then move forward all with the mindset of those that are around us, mm. not necessarily our party or our colleagues, but those around us back home. And not just in our particular neighborhood, but on one side of the street and on the other side of the street and realize that we're all in it together. Um, I think that was one of the, the parts that really got to me um, that, you know, I look forward to. And that was one of the things that engagement with the community, with the, the voters is what I, I enjoy the most. Um, I think one of the um, one of the most difficult things was to especially as an outsider was to to become that outsider mm. was to kind of move into this new space and kind of not necessarily go with the the stream and go with the vehicle i mean if you're planning a cross-country trip and you know you have the car keys there and you say you know what well, well that's easy right it makes things a little bit comfortable but when you're thinking about going on a a cross-country trip and you don't know how you're going to get there or if you're just planning on walking or if you think you're going to pull a forest gump and, and run from one one side to the next that's that part as far as when you step out on your own right when you make that leap to say this is this is me these are my ideas and what, that applies whether you're in a party or not but this is who i am and this is yeah. what i'm uh, i'm hoping to do and and the part about acceptance will people receive it or will, or or will they not will they kind of shut the door will they hang up the phone will they kind of you know pass you on by but it's kind of moving from again that that comfort of what you know to something that you don't know mm -hmm. and i think that was the you know the most daunting part of it but uh there were those rewards that i shared well, we're in our last five minutes here, and I wanted to thank everyone for joining us. Um, in our last five minutes, I just wanted to touch on a, a couple quick questions. Um, first, Hans, for you, um, you mentioned that one of the, the pleasures of your 
work in public service is encouraging others others to run. Tell us a little bit about how you form that argument and why why you think that's so important. Well, it's part of it is the fact that I'm part of a political party where you know it's important to find people who can uh, grow what has been for the most part in my time in uh, in the legislature uh, the minority party in Washington state we would like to be in the majority and mm -hmm. uh, you know um, so there's some interest in uh, winning elections um, in addition there's an interest in getting people into public office who are are qualified who can make a real difference for the community that they could represent uh, I have taken a particular interest in recruiting women and people of color to run for office um, people who've been traditionally underrepresented in public office i serve on the board of an organization called the jennifer dunn leadership institute named in honor of a former uh, uh, long-serving member of congress from washington state and um, that's been one of my interests in in uh, being a board member and recruiting people to go through the training program that we offer to prospective candidates. Uh, so, and then then there's a mentoring role for those who are already in public office, for those who are coming up, um, you know, making sure that people can learn the ropes, know what's important and not important in, in scheduling. And, um, you know, there's just, uh, one of the things that has been, you know, very interesting to me being in the legislature is just that there's constantly something new to learn, whether it's a policy, an area of policy, whether it's the ropes of how you get stuff done in any given area. And there's just so many angles to see it from. So, um, you know, if I were to keep going in the legislature, I would expect that there'd be just endless opportunities to keep learning things. Uh, but now I'm moving to hopefully into local government where uh, I'll have a whole new uh, set of things to learn. Christian, um, thoughts on how how you would in, a how would you advise someone uh, or would you advise others to think about running for office given your experience, and what are you thinking about the future politically or in public service? Um, on to encourage someone to run for office. I'd first encourage them uh, to kind of look within, to look at their heart, uh, because it's definitely a matter of the heart. And as you push forward, as you work, there's going to be those those tough days, whether on the campaign trail or in the, the the Capitol. And you might think to yourself, you look in the mirror and you say, "Why am I even doing this?" But it's to make sure that that foundation that you that you're building upon mm -hmm. is on solid rock. Um, because if you if you can you can sometimes you can start off well or you can start off with the right intentions, um, but those change, um, those motives change. But the thing is, as far as it's getting down back to your heart, and I'd say one, it's about getting engaged. And after you get engaged, rather after you get plugged into your city, your state, your county, no matter what that is, it's do you see an area or, an, or rather an area of need? not necessarily an opportunity for you, because again, that, that goes kind of back to, um, you know, shifting away from the service side of it, but it's, do you see a need that you can step in and to solve or to fill mm -hmm. um, and to kind of help people, help the people see it from that lens? Um, because as, as noted in the screening and in service itself, it's to others and it's for others. Mm -hmm. and you, you, in a sense, you take that step back and you say to yourself, okay, it's not about my agenda, right? And I think that goes on the faith side as well as it does on the on the service side, because we have this kind of concept of it, but it comes down to uh, his will versus my will, right? It's the mm -hmm. community's mm -hmm. needs versus what I may think the community may, may want. And if I, if I start interjecting myself, if you start interjecting yourself a little bit too much, and and you know, kind of removing the community from that process, you're kind of you're getting away from probably what you're getting there to do in the first place. So it, it comes down to the heart. It's what do you want to do? And I think everybody on the call and, and a lot of different lines of works, we are all 
in it to to kind of fill a need and to solve a problem. We just do it in different ways. And so, but it's it can you when you pass by an issue or a problem or a situation, does it stay with you? Mm -hmm. Can you kind of go on by or are you thinking about it? Are you thinking about how to solve that thing? Mm -hmm. And it's to kind of grab that, catch on to that, look at your heart and say, you know what, let's step out and do it for someone else, not necessarily for myself. Christian, I started with you. So Hans, I'm going to conclude with you. Um, there, there was, I, I always take you as a, a glass half full guy. Um, and there was a there was a little bit of optimism there um, as we as I raised the question around civility that you seemed to indicate you didn't you didn't believe the current track was sustainable. Um, do you have hope that in the midst of what is arguably one of our more polarized, uh, least civil eras? I'm not going to say it's the worst but certainly one of the worst in American history, um, that, that there's a chance that uh, we can work ourselves or work our way out. And, and maybe, maybe it's something that demands prayer in and of itself, that as the movie hints, there, there does need to be a connection uh, to Christ in order to, to find that, that, force, if you will, above us all that we are uh, accountable to and recognized by. Well, I think there's there's hope in the very fact that we are political animals, you know, that, mm. that we uh, seek to relate to one another. That, that's the nature of who we are. And, um, you know, while, uh, you know, we uh, are imperfect and flawed and we see that every day and how we interact in the political setting, I, I think the, the fact that we have to uh, solve problems and and uh, work out our differences, I, I think there's um, there's ways we can do that. I mean, I think that we, we we're blessed to have the political system that we do in this country, where we can, despite all of our flaws, and you know, um, sometimes our, our institutions are um, you know are triumphant at the end of the day. Mm. Um, I, I also think. You know, if there's a will, and this comes very often from a, a faith motivation, if there is a will to form friendships and to do so in spite of political differences that we may have, I think that that can make such a difference. Um, I've seen that happen in, in my life. I think also there's there's hope if we um, commit to supporting and, and embracing institutions like what the School of Public Policy is doing and elevating our civic discourse and, and educating the rising generation of leaders about civics. I think that teaches us uh, our limitations. I mean, I, I just, I think so often of, uh, you know, Professor Gordon Lloyd and the way that he framed our, our constitutional um, understanding, but, but gave us a, a sense of humility, I think, about the, the pluralistic society that we, we live in, that uh, not every issue that we face is a regime issue that that ought to <laughs> <laughs> divide us, uh, yeah. and that, that we can figure out a way. We ought to figure out a way if we understand the Constitution rightly, <laughs> to allow some room for diversity in our society, so that we can, uh, you know, be a little more tolerant of one another. So I think mm. as we have a better understanding of who we are, uh, what our civics is, then uh, you know we'll get through this stuff. Well, Christian and Hans, thank you so much. I'm so proud to call you fellow alums here of the Policy School, and I'm grateful for your continued engagement here with the work that we're doing. Um, I noted in a tweet that, uh, that it would be actually possible tonight to have an inspiring conversation about politics. And I think both in the screening and the conversation with both of you, uh, I would say mission accomplished. And I mean that in the best possible sense of the term. So thanks to both of you. Thank you all for joining us and also for the screening. Uh, this is going to be recorded. And so uh, it'll be posted on our YouTube page. Uh, please tune into that if you'd like to share this link out to friends. I see uh, Tina Marie, so nice of you to, to join us. Your kind note about this conversation. Um, Share it out to friends, who, those who kind of lost hope, I think, in 
in our current politics. I, I agree with Hans, but also with Christian and especially his example um, that, that better times lie ahead. So with that, God bless you all. And, uh, and thanks for this time together. Thank you.